Many people are aware of the properties of particular living organisms without ever actually seeing that living organism. For most people, their knowledge of this particular fungus comes from seeing it in stories books, children's cartoons, or even as a lamp made up to go in a baby's nursery. They're not aware that this is both strongly hallucinogenic and it gives us one of the most unpleasant stories about the human race's fascination with getting high. I'm John Robertson and this is the story of Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric mushroom. Now there is still debate about whether or not you should call this mushroom poisonous. Undoubtedly ingestion of a reasonable amount of it can produce sickness and a large amount would almost certainly be fatal. But there are ways to prepare it which remove those toxins. So to that extent it's a little bit like the aubergine. Raw aubergine of course is poisonous. But it's the fact that it gets you high that leads to most of the interest in it. It's one of the few hallucinogenic substances found in the extreme north of Europe. Legend has it that the reason why reindeer are able to fly on Christmas Eve to deliver Santa's presents is because they've consumed fly agaric mushroom. And the berserk, the extreme Viking warriors, are said to have consumed Amanita muscaria before going into battle, and that was what gave them their extreme courage and determination and gave us the term berserk for someone completely out of control. For the Koryak people of the Kamchatka Peninsula, it was about their only hallucinogenic substance. And like a lot of the human race, they liked to get high, either socially or for cultural reasons. Now most substances, when they enter the body, they find another substance to react with. That reaction may produce a third substance, which is what causes whatever the effect is, or it may be that they deplete the system of the second substance and that causes whatever harm is going on. But the fly garrick is pretty much unique. The main active ingredient is called ibotenic acid, and very little ibotenic acid is required to cause hallucinations. And the majority of it isn't changed, it doesn't react in the body. It simply passes through the kidneys and leaves the body in the urine. So if a Koryak were short of fresh mushrooms and wanted to get high a second time, all he had to do was pour himself a glass. If a friend came round unexpectedly, he would offer him a glass. Now what does it say about us, the human race, and our obsession with getting high? that in order to get high we will be perfectly willing to drink somebody else's wee. I'm John Robertson and you can learn more about poisonous plants, poisonous substances by visiting thepoisongarden.co.uk